I'm Harold Müller from Germany. Uh, I have been for 20 years the executive director of Peace Research Institute Frankfurt. Uh, I have been professor of international relations at Goethe University Frankfurt. And I'm pleased today to be a senior associate uh, with the Peace Research Center Prague of Charles University. Well, the global shift in power is in effect China raising, the United States trying to defend uh, its being number one, and Russia desperately uh, looking, looking after the two and trying to support its own claim for being a world power. Uh, and by the way, that it does mostly with nuclear weapons and uh, brandishing them. Uh, what does it mean for Europe? Well, Europe has become the object of compet competition of these three. They all try to keep influence, to gain influence uh, in Europe and to, to impose their own interests on us. Uh, you can see how Russia, for example, supports right-wing parties uh, extreme rightists, neo-fascist parties uh, in Western Europe to split uh, and ruin our democracies. China uh, this year for the first time maneuvered uh, in, in the Baltic Sea with uh, a couple of warships together with the Russian Navy, um, demonstrating that very powerful in that way that it has interests, military interests uh, in, in our region. And China, uh, by investing, um, or if you are unfriendly by, by buying governments, tries to, to influence countries in the European Union and to prevent the Union, uh, European Union, for example, from saying things about the Ch South China Sea and about human rights. So we have to be very careful uh, in this competition among the three to keep our character, to keep our independence, to keep our sovereignty. Uh, it's very interesting, you know. N nuclear weapons, of course, have their reputation because they have this enormous explosive power and long-lasting consequences that they are instruments of influence, that countries who have them or get them uh, jump up in, in their power. Uh, but if you look at North Korea and Pakistan, they have been miserable without nuclear weapons and they are miserable with nuclear weapons. On the other hand, it's quite clear that in the competing great powers, United States, China, uh, Russia and maybe in the future also India, no one would do without a nuclear arsenal, just out of fear that if it, face, uh, if it faces nuclear rivals, rivals with nuclear weapons, and have themselves known that they would be uh, subject to blackmail or even to nuclear war. So along the others have them. They need them too just to, to keep the power level. If everybody would disarm, the importance of nuclear weapons would of course disappear. Well, it's quite clear that it's tough that Chinese by sheer population and by economic growth is overtaking Europe, it's overtaking the United States and Russia does not count at all in nuclear terms. So the Chinese, uh, economy-wise, will be uh, the most powerful country in the world and of course uh, a strong economy buys a strong military. So the, the standard scenario is that the Chinese go up, uh, become number one, and the rest tries to stick together in a way to balance them. Um, but there are, of course, some wild cards here. First question is, can the Chinese system um, survive its own growth? Uh, is it possible to conceive of a national leader who declares his old reign immortal uh, and, and will never be reshuffled or thrown out when he becomes older and weaker? Uh, and the question, what, what with the banking bubble in China? What, what with a huge number of inefficient government-owned industries? Uh, and, and what about uh, the countryside? 
uh, where people are much poorer than in the big cities at the, at the coast. Uh, all these are op open questions, whether the Communist Party of China uh, has really the, uh, the guiding, governing intelligence to steer the country through, it, through that, we will see. And in terms of the external behavior, the fact that under President Xi, uh, China behaves rather unfriendly towards almost every neighbor. Um, I, I just mentioned the South Chinese Sea, where the Chinese, um, without any regard for the international law of the sea, establish military bases uh, in territory that is not theirs. Uh, and of course, that creates fears. And countries that have fears usually either stick together or look for external allies so that there could emerge a counter-Chinese coalition uh, in a decade or so.